Hello everyone, how's it going? In this video, we're going to talk about Molen, trading under the ticker symbol MULN. Molen has been a very exciting and interesting stock to trade recently, with a high volatility providing opportunities as well as many ongoing projects that may fuel the speculations in the months and years to come. At the same time, Molen has been having a difficult you know, period of time proving to the market that it is a serious company that investors can put their money into for the long term. So in this video, we will go through the latest fundamentals, the price actions, and my analysis as well as recommendation to hopefully help you make the best decision possible. As always, if you appreciate what I do, please consider to drop a like, subscribe to my channel, and to check out the links down in the description. Before we begin today's video though, I would like to make a brief statement regarding like what this video is about and what it shouldn't be. What is presented in this video are going to be my opinions and interpretations on how things are and will be. They shouldn't be considered as investment advice and should be watched for entertainment purposes only. They may be able to help you to make more educated decisions, but shouldn't be the only source of material for the decision making. Most of my analysis is done in the immediate past or just a few days before the uploading of the videos. And the price action may no longer reflect what you see on the charts by the time you watch my videos, but nevertheless, they are useful tools to analyze the past trends and the future momentums. Also, the analysis covers a comprehensive spectrum of the company, so it'll talk about more factors than just the latest news and the price actions. For instance, we may talk about the fundamentals, the financials, the stock market trends, the long-term perspectives, and the shareholder behaviors. Some of those factors will change, you know, over time. Some of them will remain constant. But nevertheless, since most of my viewers are watching the videos for the first time, it is important for them to see the factors in play. So with that being said, Let's begin with today's video. Molen operates in the EV manufacturing, distribution, and marketing fields. It acts as a holding for several brands and companies they have purchased along the way, the latest one being Bollinger and Last Mile Service. The company first began operating around 2014 as a successor to Coda Automotive. Another previous venture is called Molen Motorcars, and it has developed Molen GT. At the time, one of the world's earliest and maybe only EV supercars back in 2007. Overall, we can say that Molen has been in the game for a long time. But the question is whether they have the means to stay in that game. The sector is known to be capital intensive and relies on other industries that may not have been fully matured. There are also long term challenges of keeping the valuation multiplier as high as it currently is, avoiding the classification of industrial manufacturing companies. Another source of the distrust lies within the CEO itself. He does have a track record that suggests that he is in to squeeze out the company's value, as well as giving control to company, um, like giving the control of the company to some of his dodgy associates. Those are speculations for the time being, but I believe that when there is smoke, there is or at least was fire. For more, like for more material details, you can look at Hindenburg Research and its opinions on Molen back in, I think, April of this year. Again, it doesn't mean that whatever Hindenburg says is necessarily true, and more importantly, it doesn't mean that whatever they say will affect the stock price, but it should be used as an additional element to consider in your decision making. Over the past few days, Molen has been through a rough patch in the stock market, with its price sliding down to around 20 cents a level, which is down by almost 30% over the past five days. Um, it has been accelerating a bit over time, given that the stock went down by 60% over the past month or so. So simply put, it's not looking great. I believe that the main reason why Molen stock reacted such a way is because, you know, there was this shelf offering that was proposed suggesting that it may sell additional shares in the upcoming periods. Then there was a fear that grappled the retail traders who are the majority shareholders in this case. 
We gotta remember that on paper, a lot of stars are aligned for Molin to score higher, but this doesn't mean that it's gonna happen for Rio. This is why, going forward, I would recommend to wait for the stock to stabilize before committing additional capital if the current tendency remains. In terms of long-term price action trends, despite the recent upward momentums, the company has been having a bearish trend over the past five years, having traded between $5 to $10 for years before peaking around $15 and finally falling back to the penny stock levels. What this tells us is that Molin has been hard hit by the ongoing stock market downfall and its own fundamental weaknesses didn't help. This assessment has recently begun to change, but in my opinion, it hasn't reached a convincing level just yet. And that, to a point, it explains why Molin is a stock that I would recommend trading instead of investing in. Regarding the recent distribution contracts or the short squeeze, the interest surrounding Molin is the expectation to scalp a quick gain in a matter of weeks from the short squeeze, not necessarily yielding dividends its car sales or whatever the sales can provide in a matter of years. With that being said, you know, things can move very quickly in this field, so I wouldn't rule out um, the possibility of investing in Molin completely. The online communities have been initially skeptical about Molin, and I would say that their mood changes depending on whether the stock price swings up or down. Because most people commenting about the stock are like come from the retail side of things, uh, they tend to be a, a lot more reactive and responsive to like the latest price movements. And instead of saying that the fundamentals are what drive the the price action, I would say that price action tends to, you know, motivate people to formulate reasons with the fundamentals around them. In other words, it's random. People try to make like causality and, uh, you know, correlations with them. But it doesn't mean that this is necessarily the case, right? So really, I would say that as far as the online communities are concerned, um, sometimes they can be hopeful. Other times they're blindly hopeful. Um, even when the stock is down, you see a lot of people saying that, okay, they're going to go all in because it's going to lower like their overall cost. So to that, I would say it would make sense um, if we were in a, you know, favorable stock environment. If the narrative around growth stocks is good, if we have a lot of money and capital flowing around, none of this is the case at the moment. So I would say that, you know, the, the logic behind which they um, they formulate those trades is currently having some issues to say the least. With that being said, sometimes I know that when the tides go up, everything just goes up, right? Just look at companies like Ideonomics. Just look look at companies like FCEL, Fuso. Um, they don't necessarily operate that well, but it doesn't mean that whenever like the the vibe is good um a lot of those companies would just benefit from a a sudden bullish wave for no reason so some people might be banking on that on top of that the macroeconomic trends within the sector have been under pressure due to several reasons including the increases of the interest rates the capital flight from growth stocks to other options, the conflicts around the world, the supply chain issues, and the expectation that there might be a recession. Another factor to look at is how the flagship company of the sector, Tesla, has been doing. The EV sector is relatively new, and much of it still is in development. Very often, people determine whether they should invest in this field based on how Tesla has been performing. The idea is to profit from a sector-wide gravy train conducted by Tesla pulling the rest. We have seen on multiple occasions that that's how the price action for many companies like Neo, Lucid, or Molen um, behave. Of course, Molen doesn't always follow the same trends. This has played in its favor and sometimes in its disfavor. 
We have to be mindful of those factors because they will paint the surrounding environment in a specific direction. With that being said, let's also take a look at Molin's financials, which may give us some hints of decisions that a company would be able to make in the upcoming periods. The company's cash balance has decreased somewhat, but for now, it is not a major issue as the reserves remain at a decent level. The reason why cash balance is relevant to examine is because cash is used not only to finance the operations, but to satisfy short-term obligations to avoid, to avoid liquidations. If Molin cannot meet those obligations, it would be insolvent, and the company would be liquidated. To prop up the cash positions, companies have three options. Positive cash flows from operations, more debt, or raise the capital by selling the equity. In other words, dilutions. Liabilities of Molens have provided some encouragement to those who want to invest into the company because they have decreased it by about $13 million. Nevertheless, it's about in the same period of time when we saw the share price going from almost $0.55 cents to below 30 this price movement shows us that currently the fundamentals play a very small role in how the stock is perceived. The last element to look at would be the profitability of Molin. That's one of the biggest weaknesses, to be honest, and is in my opinion one of the main reasons why Molin remained as a stock to be traded but not to be actually trusted with long-term capital, especially from institutional shareholders. The company hasn't generated revenue for more than a year, and despite its best efforts to control the general operating costs, the lack of operational revenue will eventually dig a hole in its finances, forcing Molin to either take on more debt, to further dilute the shareholders to raise capital, or to make additional efforts to increase its revenue. In my opinion, we gotta expect to see Molin choosing the second option if possible, because it's probably the one that requires the least commitment from Molin. This may cause further tumbling down in the share price, which don't really help the company to be maintained in NASDAQ. Of course, they can always reverse split. Uh, this usually also doesn't help the company's price action. So, regarding the shareholders, I would say that they're for the most part, retail, they're volatile and they're reactive to the price action. I understand that there are many people who are very optimistic about it, but most people are not. Like, whenever they see the stock making new lows, their first reaction is simply to give up. Um, so this is a stock that is good to trade and to speculate, but I don't see that many institutional shareholders putting their money in. Of course, it might be increasing. It's not significant enough to change my view that this company is good for trading, but not really for investing. I know that recently BlackRock increased their holdings in Molin, but it's not sufficient to change my mind from the above observation. At the same time, the lack of significant institutions uh, who want to, you know, dip their toes into Molin also suggests that maybe at some point I'm not the only one who's skeptical about this company's sincerity and um, you know transparency and also relevance. So one of the major catalysts for Molin, for why people want to buy in Molin, is because they want to sh short squeeze the significant size of the short positions reason why it's relevant is because short positions tell us what a significant portion of the market thinks of Molin, and also whether there will be potentials for a squeeze. Currently, there's around 42 million shares being shorted about, uh, like against Molin. The vast majority of them are traded outside of public exchanges, so by institutional traders. So, the potential for short squeeze is significant. The short squeeze is a phenomenon observed when traders decide to collectively buy up the price of a stock, forcing those holding short orders to redeem their positions. The reason why they might have to do this is because the positions are borrowed from brokers, and that the shares have to be paid back at some point. So, the redemption acts as a purchase in the open market, which will push the stock to even higher levels. With that being said, it's really important to control the exposure to a stock regardless of how interesting the stock action seems to be. At the end of the day, opportunities will always be there, but the capital might not be. 
doesn't mean that the short squeeze will certainly succeed and that Molen will necessarily take off. Nothing is certain in this market or anywhere, in fact. On the other hand, with the information that we had a few weeks ago and the information we have now, I believe that it could be worth our time to place a small position in Molen now and, um, you know, to benefit from any potential random takeoffs. Um, for those who want to buy Molen, I would say that they should be people who are comfortable taking additional risks. They have a diversified portfolio. They believe in the long-term relevance of EV. And they also believe that Molen will benefit um, from like positive news and positive attitude from the stakeholders. So Molen overall remains a speculative stock to be kept as a marginal position if you decide to do so. It may have a relevance to start putting in more cash if the stock price can be maintained for at least three to five trading days. Meanwhile, in addition to the potentials that the stock has, we should also remember the potential pitfalls ahead. So the shelf offering might cause some additional tumblings in the upcoming month. I would recommend to buy once the stock price holds up for at least three to five days and a gradually dollar average in instead of com instead of like committing in all at once. The exposure I would recommend should be between 0.5 and 1% of your portfolio.